an interesting case in the field of dentistry. Really? Really. Surprising. Yeah. Here we have a bridge on implants, on four implants, four unit bridge that was made very long time ago. Wait, one implant per tooth? No, a bridge. Four unit bridge on four implants. Mm -hmm. uh, cemented restoration. Uh, PFM bridge. The patient lost uh, tooth number 44 with time, let's say, something like this. The tooth that's supposed to be here. Here we have a problem because you don't have enough uh, yeah, don't have any, any space, space for, <laughs> for anything. anything. So the question is, what are you going to do? So we have different options. Uh, the first option is we can have some bone augmentation, we can add implant, and we can have a single crown on a single implant. Or maybe we'll have a five unit bridge on five implants if we'll add an implant, but on the other hand, it's maybe a little bit too much implants for a five unit bridge. You don't need another implant. So the question is what you want to do in this case when it's a problematic case for restoration of one implant. So what we decided uh, for this case is instead of making a restoration for this tooth with uh, the addition of an implant or uh, addition of a single crown, we'll use the four implants that the patient already has and we'll just change the bridge and add another cantilever tooth for the same bridge and in the meanwhile we'll change it from cemented to school retained restoration and this way we can add another implant without any bone augmentation without any difficult procedures and add another crown yeah, add another crown without <laughs> adding another implant and another dif the difficult bone augmentations. Uh, so the crown will just be in the air, like it will rest on the gingiva. Yeah, maybe there will be a little bit of space between the crown and gingiva. Uh, this is the cantilever. Uh, the crown is in the air for one premolar uh, tooth, it's fine. Uh, it won't break, it will be... Because the forces are distributed. Yeah, the force is dis distributed, the, the occlusal part, if you won't make it too big, it won't be any problem. So, in here you can see the... Constructions. The abutments uh, that were beneath the bridge. You can see in this abutment uh, residues of cement that were below the gingiva. That's why the gingiva is a little bit pinkish red. Uh, maybe yes, maybe not, but uh, it's not good. Uh, you don't want to have a lot of cement below the gingiva because it can cause a lot of inflammation. Mm -hmm. And if it will cause a lot of inflammation, you can have a problem with the implants. In this area, it's very problematic to see the, the cement because when you take an x-ray mm -hmm. uh, of the implants, you don't see the cement in the buccal and the palatal area. You, you see only in the proximal areas. Because of the angle of the... Exactly, because of the angle of the x-ray. Mm -hmm. So this cement, you can see uh, with your own eyes, you can see with the x-ray. You don't know if there was any problem, what the cause of the problem. You can see it right now when you took out the bridges. So right now you, can, you know that there was residues of uh, cement, there was a little bit of plaque attention, and there was uh, inflammation. Yeah, that, that, that's the biggest part with the cement restorations. You need to clean very, very good, and you don't always know if you cleaned well enough. Because all of the fluids in the mouth? No, you just don't see it. Oh, it's not something you... No, you it's below the gingiva. You can see it uh, almost two millimeters below the gingiva. So you don't see it. You don't know that it's there. You don't have any instruments to see it. Even when you're doing an x-ray, you don't see it on the x-ray. So you think that everything is good, but later you can have some problems. What is the problem with the thick layer of cement? When you have a thick layer of cement, it, you can you probably have an inaccurate uh, restoration because if you had a restoration that is accurate enough and it uh, fits the abutments very well, you'll have a minimal layer of cement. Uh, in this case, you have a thick layer of cement. That means that you have a pretty big spacer, spacer between the abutment and the grounds. Uh, and 
you have a big space uh, between the abutments and the crowns in cases when the crowns doesn't fit very, very well. So the doctor or the technician take out from the crowns material and add in more cement. Here you took all the abutments. Yeah, we took off all the abutments. And you can see that in the abutment with uh, the thick layer of cement and the cement that was below the gingiva, uh, you have the uh, biggest amount of bleeding. So that means that it was with the, the most inflamed uh, gingiva was around this abutment. We placed uh, multi-units and on top of this multi-units we placed he healing caps. For two months until the healing process? No, for a week. Ah, for a week? Yeah, yeah, for a week is enough. It's more than enough. Uh, in here we, can, we want to show the feeding of the abutment at the crowns, what we said before. When we had the crowns on the abutments, we had a problem. Uh, we saw that the cement was too thick mm -hmm. and here we can see that the feeding between the crowns and the abutments uh, wasn't very good. Yeah, so, there is space. <clears throat> yeah, there is space. So these spaces, the, the, the doctor or the technician uh, wanted to close with cement. Some of the cement leaked out and was around the implants and around the, the abutments. As then you had some inflammation. This is one of the biggest problems with the cemented restorations because when you have the crowns and they're not fitting very well, with enough cement you can still achieve something like passive fit, let's say. With enough cement <laughs> yeah, and, with hammer. <laughs> and a hammer. <laughs> you, you, can fit you, you can fit anything with cement restorations. It doesn't mean that it fits very good. And then when you have the x-rays, you don't see anything on the x-ray because mm -hmm. you cleaned all the residues in the proximal areas. But as you saw in the buccal area, we had cement. We had some restorations that, uh, some uh, cement residues that we didn't see even in the proximal areas. And in here you can see the bridge, I think it's the, this is the Konya bridge, mm -hmm. uh, with the skeleton restoration. So in the skeleton restoration, because you screw the bridge after the cementation of the sleeves, you can clean everything, you can make sure that you don't have any residues of the cement, uh, that everything is polished and cleaned before. Is it okay to place sleeves this far, uh, this near one another? You don't have any... And, uh, you don't have any other any option? Ad, any other no, option, I because see, but, uh, the implants are very close, as you mm. saw. Uh, so the sleeves will be close. Uh, the multi-units are close one to another. Uh, this is what you had. We didn't add any implants, we didn't do anything. We just took out the bridge and changed to another one. Uh, same was with the cement rest cemented restoration. The bridge won't uh, be fragile because uh, the sleeves are so close and you took material in both those spots? No, the, the, the only problem that can be is uh, if the bridge will apply pressure on the gingiva. So in this case, if you uh, use multi-units uh, on the uh, level of the gingiva, you won't have any problems because you can clean between the multi-units, you can clean uh, underneath the bridge uh, if you make some uh, spaces between the sleeves. Uh, here you can see one of the crowns that... Uh, the canine, right? This is the premolar, the premolar. I think, yeah one of them, uh, that broke before we, when we took out the bridge and you can see the Zikonia bridge with the tooth with, that we've added. This one is the cantilever that's coming be, uh, instead of the tooth that the patient lost. And it's uh, the same, almost the same size as all the other. Yeah, it's the same size. You can scan the, the, the old bridge and you can have the bridge with exactly the same morphology. You, you don't need to change anything. This is the bridge uh, mounted. Yeah, this is the bridge mounted. Uh, we made the, the tooth that the patient lost a little bit smaller, so it won't break uh, when forces are applied. Uh, you, don't you don't want to have a cantilever, uh, the occlusal surface of the cantilever too big, because when the patient eats, uh, it will uh, absorb as much yeah. pressure as it can and break. Exactly. 
So you make the occlusal surface a little bit smaller and this way the integrity of the, of the construction will be much better. And here it rests on the gingiva. Yeah, it rests a little bit. I, it's hard to tell from the picture. Mm -hmm. And it's a PMMA bridge, right? Right now I think it's a PMMA bridge, but later on of course we'll make it from a zirconia, a zirconia or you can make it from any material that you want. This is the sleeves. Uh, with cement the sleeves into the bridge. Uh, in this case, you can cement them outside the mouth, you can cement them in, inside the mouth. You can cement it outside of the mouth? Yeah, because you have only four implants and they're very close one to another. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have a bridge with a very big span, so... so on small bridges, you don't need to use this protocol, you can just cement it outside the mouth and fit it? The longer the span of the bridge, the more problematic, the, the more inaccurate uh, final installation you'll have. So in this case, you do want, you can cement it because it's a very small bridge. It's uh, four implants, but they're very close one to another. So in the scanning process, you don't have uh, a lot of deviations. You don't have a lot of uh, inaccuracies. This is the occlusal check? Yeah, you can see that in the occlusal check you have uh, contacts on all of the crowns and you can see that all of the sleeves are inside the bridge and you don't have any problems with the cementation that uh, some one of or some of the sleeves... Uh, no cement residues. Yeah, no cement residues. You can see that we took a little bit of material between the sleeves mm -hmm. so uh, we'll have uh, the patient will have a little bit of uh, space to clean between the implants. You don't want the bridge to uh, apply pressure on the gingiva. And you want to give him an option to clean it, right? Yeah, the, the, that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. uh, you want the patient to be able to clean uh, beneath the bridge to, to maintain the, the implants, the bridge, all of the constructions, because if the patient has the ability for uh, good maintenance, the longevity of the implants will be much bigger. You can see here that all of the multi-units that we used are on uh, the gingiva line. So the patient has the ability to clean uh, between the multi-units and between the implants and the bridge won't apply any pressure on the gingiva. Could you use D-type in this case? Or uh, no, only V-type because of the lack of space? Because probably uh, of the lack of uh, interproximal space because of the proximity between the implants it can be a problem using d-type because the d-type multi-unit is bigger in diameter as well as in its height so the patient will have a problem in the maintenance uh, process closing with plastic pins yeah we're closing with plastic pins adding a little bit of composite material uh, for the retention of the pin uh, inside the screw channel this is the plastic piece. Yeah, yeah the you composite. can see the plastic piece with the composite. And oh, you just apply the composite. Yeah, we just apply the, the composite on it. the pin, put it in, uh, cure the light curing composite, and remove uh, the top of the, the pin. So, and here you just polish the top, and that's it. Exactly. And here you can see the two that we've added. We've talked a lot about the, this case, but it's a very simple case. And we made it that simple just because we changed the bridge. Instead of making very difficult procedures and trying adding another implant with bone augmentation, yeah, with bone augmentation, with uh, different uh, surgical procedures, uh, everything here is just taken out, changing the abutments to multi units, and making a new bridge. That's all. And uh, I don't know, this patient had health issues that you chose this path? No, but, but if he had, it's even uh, bigger, better, yeah. yeah, it's even better to change the bridge instead of uh, getting into different type of uh, difficult procedures. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you just don't have enough space for uh, the addition of another implant and you have everything uh, all the the benefits of changing the bridge instead of adding another implant changing. So you just made the list of pros and cons. Exactly. Thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome. And thank you for being with us. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow to stay tuned up to date. 
Thank you and have a great day.